What's going on guys? Oregon Motorcycle back. Today we are doing the first service. We have arrived at the 600 mile mark. Actually, I'm a, I'm a hair over. I think I'm about 630 or 640 miles. It's just the way my schedule worked out with work and everything. Um, but today um, I'm going to show you guys what it takes to do the first service. And as you see here, I have three quarts of 1030 genuine Honda oil. This is not synthetic. This is just a regular oil because I'm going to maintain maintenance per the manual, which is every 4,000 miles. I'm not going to put synthetic oil in a bike and change it every 4,000 miles. That would be ridiculous. So um, on top of that genuine uh, Honda oil filter right here and the crush washer. And according to the manual, um, this is all that is required to buy for your first 600 mile service. Now, in this video, I'm gonna show you more things to check on your new motorcycle um, besides just changing the oil, which is what the manual recommends. <laughs> So I know some of you guys are a little concerned about doing the first service yourself or service yourself just in general. Um, this is going to be real simple. I mean, for the most part, it's just going to take a 12 millimeter in wrench to get that, uh, that drain bolt out right there. Okay. And hopefully we'll be able to get the filter off with our hands. If not, we might have to get a little uh, pair of channel or pair of channel locks to get it off. And so I know some of you guys are concerned. Sorry, the bike's really dirty. <laughs> Been riding nothing but rain last week and a little bit of snow. Um, if you guys are concerned with your warranty, I know some of you guys have already expressed concern with your warranty. You guys have mentioned it to me. And I think somebody in Europe told me that um, it voids your warranty um, if you do your own service, especially the first service. Well, in fact, I know for a fact that's not the case here in the United States. And you guys over in other countries may wanna check your manual because the manual on this 2019 Honda CB500X clearly states that you are allowed to perform your own maintenance on the motorcycle and it will not void your warranty, okay? Um, now it does say if the maintenance is done improperly that it can and will void the warranty. So keep that in mind. If you're gonna do this, do it right. Um, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do it right. So let's get started. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is make sure that your engine is uh, warm. Um, preferably you want the oil up to temperature, which might require a little ride around the block, whatever. Um, I just got home from work. Um, actually I came home, let the bike rest for 10 or 15 minutes and I went back out to lunch and I just came home. So the engine is probably perfect temp. It's not going to sizzle your hands, you know, um, not going to sizzle your hands. I can touch the header, but yet, you know, the, the engine's warm and that's what you want. Um, and that helps the oil, um, drain easier down to the bottom it helps you get more of the oil out or whatever so just make sure your engine's warm and uh, yeah the basically the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a 12 millimeter wrench and get down there and get that drain plug out and get the oil drained out oh my goodness I got a little uh little torque in it the torque specs for this bolt is uh, I think right at 20 pounds Again, your manual or your owner's manual will tell you that. We'll have that information. So what I like to do is just back this out the whole time you're pushing in. See, it's out, but I'm still pushing in, so I'm blocking it and then pull your finger away quick. Ooh, perfect aim. So there you can see, it actually doesn't look that bad. You don't see any big chunks of metal coming out. <laughs> so here's our, uh, our drain plug here and this is the washer that we're going to be replacing this is the crush washer which doesn't look much like a crush washer compared to some of my other bikes but there it is always replace this crush washer when you're changing your oil it'll help prevent leaks all right so you can see here the oil filter is right above the header so if i pull this off this oil is going to drip right onto the header and it's going to smoke for a while and this and that so what i have here is a piece of tin foil that i'm going to try to put under here somehow and help deflect some of that oil down to the drain pan over here. So let's do that and then we'll get the oil filter pulled off. <sighs> okay, so it's, it's pretty tight. We're gonna, gonna get some channel locks. There we go. All right. Let's 
see what a mess we can make here. Actually, that tin foil worked out really well because I think all the oil just went in that tin foil. In fact, it still is, so I might as well just drain the oil filter out in there. Nice. That worked better than I thought. All right. So we're gonna let that drain out a minute. We're gonna get a rag and clean this up. And um, then we're gonna get the drain bolt put in, get the new filter put in. All right, so we got that mating surface cleaned up. Um, we have the oil filter here. And we're gonna wanna put some oil on this. And some, the K&N air, our oil filters, uh, they come like pre-greased or whatever. And this one's a bit oily, but you guys, you guys always wanna make sure that you put oil um, on this seal every time. And that, that's the same for our car too. So I'm gonna take some brand new oil here. Dip your finger in there and kind of slop it around there. You don't have to be this messy, but anyways. So we're just gonna screw this on here, just like it came off. Got oil on it. Gotta wipe it off. Oil's getting kind of messy here. And um, basically, you guys, what I've always done is I've always done oil filters as tight as I can with my hand. And I mean, you can feel this one bottom out. That's kind of cool. So, um, we're, you know, we're going to start it up and inspect for leaks. And if there's ever a leak, I've seen a leak one time on a, uh, on an oil filter, on a bad change or whatever. And it's pretty apparent pretty quick, so... But yeah, and we're going to clean this motorcycle up too a little bit, but okay. So there's the oil filter installed new one. So you can see there's still a little bit of oil dripping right there. And just for shits and grins, I'm going to level out the bike. It's on the kickstand right now. I wish I had a center stand that would kind of level it out a little bit more, but I'm just going to grab the bike by the handlebars and kind of shake it around a little bit. See if I can get a little more out. Yep. All right, so the last little bit of oil is draining it out. I think we got quite a bit more out by uh, tilting the bike like that. So there's a little tip for you guys. As soon as this is done dribbling, we're gonna have right here, we have our new washer and we're re reusing the drain bolt. All right, so we're gonna call that good and get this back in. Snug it up here with the end wrench. All right, I got the torque wrench set. I can barely get it. All right, it clicked a couple times actually. It didn't feel that tight, so. Yeah, it's nice and tight, so. So now let's put some oil in it. All right, let's get some oil in this baby. So on this motorcycle here, right here is your oil fill cap. So just take that off. It's the first time I've opened this up from the factory. This is where the oil goes, and this is oil for your motor and your transmission. Just stick the funnel in there. Yeah, that'll work. And let's get some oil in it. 
So the manual says, um, I think it holds, what is it? It's right under three quarts, I'm pretty sure. Or it's under three liters or something. I'm not 100%. I just know you need about three uh, quarts to do the oil change. Oops, shit. We're not, uh, we're holding the camera and trying to talk and pour oil in at the same time. So maybe I should eliminate one of the tasks. Okay, so anyways, you guys are gonna need um, three quarts um, to do this oil change, okay? All right, I have put uh, two and a half quarts in the motorcycle so far. Uh, so right here, you guys, on this motorcycle, right below the clutch cover here, uh, there's a viewfinder. And this is where you can see your oil. And you can see, if it wasn't for all the dirtiness, <laughs> you guys can see these two little marks here. When the bike is level, you want your oil level in between these two marks, okay? So now we're just gonna tilt it to the side a little bit and see if we can see any oil and see where it's at. And then if I can see some oil, I'm gonna start it up. Now remember, you guys, when you start it up, you know, this is the first time changing the oil on this, so I can't tell for sure, but some engines, you know, cars and motorcycles, they will take a little more oil away after you start them up. That's why it's important to check your oil again after you do the first startup to make sure you still have the proper oil level. So let's tilt the bike right now and see if we can see anything in there. Okay, we can see it. Actually, that's looking pretty good. That's almost on the money, and that's with two and a half quarts. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put the cap on, and then we're gonna fire it up. All right, so one thing you guys always wanna look at after you change your oil, as you can see, it's the oil light. You guys can see the oil uh, indicator light right there, right above my finger, okay? So we wanna make sure that goes off within a reasonable time after we start the engine, okay? So let's keep an eye on that, and we're gonna start the engine and let it run for a sec. While we're gonna run the engine for the first time, we're also gonna go down below while it's running and look for leaks. Okay, the oil light's off. Let's check for leaks. First thing you wanna look at is the oil filter because that's under pressure. See where our oil's at. Oops, it's a neutral. I better go over there because I'm kind of. I just want to make sure before I tilt it on there. All right. All right. Let's see where it's at. Okay. So there you guys go. I'm holding the bike level, and as you can see, there's no visible oil. So you can. I. I mean, there. You can see where the the engine has sucked up some of the oil. It's probably in the oil filter, and maybe you know some of it's up top still, but definitely no oil in the viewfinder. So we're gonna add another, you know, maybe 25% of that quart, and then we'll check it again. Okay, so I added 25% more. So for you people on the metric system, I'm not complaining. I wish we were on the metric system too. I have 250 milliliters left, um, so that's two and three quarters of quart of a quart, of quarts, <laughs> can't talk. Let's see where we're at. Oh yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. So I'm gonna run with that and I'm gonna check it maybe after my first ride again, obviously. And if this is your first time doing this, you guys um, make sure that you're checking your oil filter and your drain plug, especially after the first ride and make sure that you don't see any drips um, coming from anywhere, definitely don't want any of those two items leaking oil, it could cause a wreck and all that other stuff. So, um, this oil is going to go straight down to the back tire and you're going to lose traction. Okay. So let's look at a couple other things. Okay. So the next thing that you guys want to look at is the chain. 
And um, now I've, I've already adjusted this chain. I did it at 300 miles, but you're definitely going, if you haven't touched your chain yet, you're definitely gonna want to uh, clean and lube your chain on the service and check the adjustment. Now, I believe, yeah, this one might be a little loose without measuring it, um, but I might measure it and stuff. I'm not gonna go over in this video um, how to do all this stuff. There's probably a million videos on that anyways. This is the, to focus on uh, the first service and I wanted to do the oil for you guys to make sure that you guys knew exactly how to change the oil on this bike. But adjusting the chain goes pretty much the same for all bikes. Um, you know, you're gonna loosen the nut on the other side and then you can back it out with these nuts here. Uh, the torque specs I believe are 20 uh, pounds for this and uh, 60 pounds for this nut here. Um, another thing you're gonna wanna check is your clutch. Uh, free play so oops I better turn the ignition off <laughs> uh, I can feel the grips they're all nice and toasty yeah okay so the free play in the clutch and this right here is about perfect I haven't adjusted the clutch at all um, but I do have a little bit of free play here always want to make sure on your motorcycle that you do have a little bit of free play before you feel the cable start to pull so you guys can see this right there is where, where is where the cable starts to pull and then go on from there and that is proper okay another thing you want to do is of course check your brake fluid so let's put this up level and to check your front brake fluid you do it right here in the front and you can see that's right on the money it's right in the center and then we can go around to the back and check your brake fluid here now Honda does not recommend uh, any maintenance performed by the owner on the brake system which was kind of interesting because I figured at two years they would want you to change the fluid but they this is a sealed system, um, so I don't know. I'll do some more investigating and see how that goes. It's recommended that you change your brake fluid every two years. That's just kind of, you know, industry standard or whatever. But, you know, um, for a basic, basic stuff, you want to make sure that you check your brake fluid and make sure that's on par. And I know you guys, if you're riding the bike, you're going to know how the brakes feel and you would know if something was out of whack or not by then. So um, the brakes should be good to go. Now, we are going to look at a couple bolts. A couple bolts I'm going to point out to you guys in this, which I'm going to check. I'm not going to film me tightening bolts because that's, you know, retarded or whatever. But um, if you're doing your chain maintenance, you're probably going to need to adjust your chain. So you're going to be checking the back axle bolts and these bolts, which are pretty important um, on a new bike. Um, uh, just moving forward, uh, other bolts you're going to want to check are subframe bolts. Um, I haven't looked at where they're located, but there is a subframe on this bike. <clears throat> you might have to remove this panel here. Uh, those are pretty important, important bolts to check. Uh, you guys can look at your rear set bolts, check those while you're at it. Uh, motor to frame bolts, like these bolts right here, motor to frame bolts, um, that kind of thing, like these right here. I have seen these uh, back out um, and come loose and actually fall out of brand new bikes before. So. Um, you guys definitely want to check those and um, moving forward to the front axle check your front axle bolts you guys again can look up the torque specs and again check these clamp bolts I've seen these clamp bolts come loose too um, on bikes and of course check your front caliper bolts here these two bolts all right um, and that should cover the basics you know of course if you guys have any bolts that you want to go over um, that you may add to this of course add to it but this is above and beyond um, what the manual states and what is required and while you're at it make sure all your lights are working your flashers your high beams all that good stuff and check your tire pressure because that's always a good thing to do and after you do that you guys will have completed your first scheduled uh, 600 mile uh, break-in service by yourself and you're not paying those expensive dealer fees for your brand new bike so uh, and again, it's not required. Um, you are allowed to do your own maintenance on your bike. So until next time, guys, who has noticed the face, the robot face on the engine? Bah, bah. Oregon Motorcycle.